We're driving a 2022 Lexus NX 350F Sport. Coming up, we're gonna share a feature that confused both Evie and myself. I was pointing at me when I was talking about her and vice versa. That I'm... actually is on theme. <laughs> but first, information explosion. The Lexus NX is a small luxury SUV and it's all new for 2022. Let's begin with interior. The interior has a lot of soft materials, nice stitching, but it also has a lot of shiny black plastic. But what's troublesome here is that the buttons are even made out of the shiny black plastic. So there are fingerprints everywhere. To me, I actually really like the look of everything. There's kind of a classic, almost like architectural look to it. I think it's, it's a very attractive cabin. I love the storage in this interior. One of my favorite parts is that there's a charger for your phone. And then when you're you ready to- Oh, I can? What? <laughs> <laughs> even better. That is even better. I like to have a little nook to hide my phone when I leave my car. And so this is a great logical spot to put it. And the interior is soft like a jewelry box. It's And so is this one over here. I was like, do they want me to store my rings here? Are you on your way home from a diamond heist? <laughs> Please put your diamonds here. I think it's because we're in the F Sport version and they're sportier seats, but for me, they kind of squeeze in aggressively in the shoulder region here. How do they fit you? They fit me fine. I think the problem isn't the F Sport. I think it's that you've been working out so much. I actually don't work out that much, everybody, but <laughs> uh, it is becoming a problem. Oh my gosh, it's that thing where people are like, I don't want to work out because you know I don't want to get too buff. It happened. Like, it finally happened. Wow, amazing. <laughs> That said, it does hold me in place, and this is the F-Sport version, which is the sportiest one, so having a little bit of extra lateral support is not a bad thing. As for space, in the second row, I've got good knee clearance and good head clearance. The seat backs recline one detents, and it's actually a pretty comfortable uh, seating position, even in the standard spot, but if you need a little extra recline, you can definitely do that. I think that middle position would be uh, pretty cozy. Uh, you might want to put just uh, maybe a child there at most. But for normal sized adults, and I am five foot ten with a long torso, um, we fit just fine on the outboard. And I think you could certainly be taller than me and still fit comfortably in the back seat of a Lexus NX. In terms of cargo, we've got 22.7 cubic feet to work with, which I think is a reasonable amount of space. But what impressed me most is how they've arranged the cargo area. The underfloor storage is actually usable in a way that it's often not. It's divided in a way that makes it easy to organize your things, but they're also of a usable size. Sometimes they're divided into such small spaces that I don't know what you'd use it for, but you can put a backpack, a purse. It's a great space. And I like how they've got a little cutout on the right side so you can take the cargo cover, which folds in half, and just slot it right in there so you've got somewhere to put that. And then you've got little um, hooks on the side and fold out hooks on the right side. You do have split fold seats. Uh, how did you find folding that seat back? It's quite a reach if I try to access it from the cargo area, so I'd probably be more likely to go over to the side, especially since the seat back kept hitting the um, front seat. How is it getting the child seat in here? The door didn't open quite as wide as I'd like, and it's a little bit short, but once you actually got the seat in there, the latch points are exposed, easy to install. Kiddo, how is it getting in, in and out of this thing? Yeah, it makes it easy to get in and out of. And then in terms of safety, here's what the NHTSA and the IIHS think about the Lexus NX. Beyond crash safety, there's a lot of active safety here as well. Lane keeping assist, uh, pedestrian detection with the automatic emergency braking system. And it also is aware at intersections. So if you're about to pull in front of somebody, it can prevent you from doing so. Eight airbags also come standard, as does blind spot alert. So in total, a very safe package. What do we think? Is this thing family friendly? Family friendly. Yeah. Yes, if you were a small family. Rear window test. All the way down. <laughs> Armrest test. Driving in a comfortable eight and four, I have a pretty easy time getting my elbows on both the inboard and outboard perch. And I find them soft, but not too soft. There's like a layer of firmness underneath the layer of squish. I'm gonna go, 
90% outboard, 85% inboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family? If so, you're always welcome to subscribe. Style! When I look at the Lexus NX, I see a little bit of sportiness, um, I see some visual flair, but also some restraint. Um, it very much looks like a Lexus with that spindle grill up front. And we're driving the F-Sport rendition in particular, which has a slightly larger grill. It's got a cross hatch pattern um, that's a little sportier. Uh, it's also got that silver um, front lip. It's a really interesting combination of crisp lines and curves that come together in interesting ways, especially the rear door there's a place where a curve and a line come together to almost make an arrow it looks awesome but it doesn't look overdone somehow we should also talk about the door handles so it looks like a grab handle that you want to pull and you don't do it that way there's a little button that you pull on the inside and the door opens electronically uh, same deal on the inside you push this button and it electronically releases but the real logic behind it is that it's um, useful for safe exit assist where the vehicle can delay the opening of the door if let's say a bicycle or a car is coming up beside you and it doesn't want you to get out in front of it. I actually prefer just pulling a door handle but I understand why they did it. When I first tried to get in this vehicle trying to get our girl to the bus I ran around <laughs> frantically pulling on the handles trying to get in. It like, doesn't feeling. work. Really? Wow. What do you guys think? Do you like the style of the NX? If so, if no, tell us in the comments. If you're curious how I'm being blinded, you can see it right here. And if you're wondering what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can always follow us on Instagram, in motion. In driving the Lexus NX, there is an elevated sophistication to it, like you would expect from a luxury vehicle. It uh, absorbs bumps well. This particular NX has an adaptive suspension, and uh, let's uh, toy around with some modes here. Eco, Sport Plus. In total, the disposition of the NX, I think, is appropriately premium. In F-Sport, guys, what's interesting to me is I do like how it steers, but uh, I found myself reaching the limits of the tires or at least making them squeal much earlier than I would have expected, coming into turns and being like, Aah! and it looks like I'm doing crazier things than I actually am. The Lexus NX is offered in a bunch of different engine choices, but we've got the uh, 2.4 liter turbocharged engine and from a stop, floored. There we go. Whee. So do you notice that there was a bit of a pause after I floored it before the engine really came to life? Everybody noticed. For us, where we're always driving at low speeds or potentially trying to pull out uh, in uh, awkward um, intersections, that delay is a little off-putting. Once you're up to speed, uh, it's, it's a very perky engine, but that off-the-line punch, I wish it was a little bit more prompt. All right, well, that's what I think, but what does Sweetie think? Evie's at the wheel and you'll notice we're stopped. The reason is Evie has thoughts about the drive selector. I found this so overwhelmingly confusing, but I am really bad at stuff like this. You push it to the side and backwards to go forward. And then you push it to the side and forwards to go backwards. It's just that simple. I used the exact same drive selector in a Lexus RX video I shot for Kelly Blue Book. And I had the exact same problem where I got in and like pulled it back to put it to drive. And I was like, why aren't we going? Why car no go? And I'm like, ah, this is a bit of an annoyance if you are not used to this kind of setup. However, if you've ever driven a Toyota Prius, it's the exact same kind of functionality. You'll get used to it, I promise, but if you get into a different car every week like we do, it's initially befuddling. Mm -hmm. We almost missed the bus. <laughs> Did you really? Yes, like why won't it do the thing? Well, it's all okay now, sweetie. Put us in drive, take it away. What about steering this thing? How's it feel for you? I think it feels good. Like there's a real immediacy to it that I can kind of feel in the pit of my stomach. Stomach. It doesn't take much movement to get that change in direction. Which and, is my favorite. Well, for you, it's great because it feels exciting even though you're nowhere near the limits of the car. You don't yes. have to be going that fast for it to feel fun. Exactly. How's visibility? The only visibility really worth commenting on is over my left shoulder. The B pillar kind of gets in my way. Yeah, kind of a standard B, uh, B pillar issue, but nothing yeah. like make or break. And also the NX comes with blind spot warning standard. So uh, even if there are areas where it's like, oh, it's a little bit uh, blocked over there, you've uh, got some electronic backup.
That's a very good point. It's normal. The kid says it's normal. All right, well, we've achieved normal. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, that wasn't a very good clap at all. Let me do I just want to clap again, but I don't keep the segment going. Uh, in total, I think the Lexus NX has a lot to offer from a driving experience. Speaking of good vibes, thank you guys for the good vibes you give us in how you support us, whether that's leaving a thumbs up, a comment, um, supporting us on Patreon, thanks patrons, or even uh, using the thanks button that YouTube has installed down below. However you choose to support us, we appreciate that. And if you don't want to support us, that's cool too. We love everybody. Though we do love the people who support us a little bit more. Onward to emotion factor. What do you think, sweetie? Is there an emotion factor here? It's stylish, it's luxurious. Yes, I think there is an emotion factor here. Yeah, I think uh, those traits are amplified by the Lexus badge. Um, as we've talked about um, having driven quite a few Toyota and Lexus vehicles recently, people feel great about buying a Toyota or Lexus. It feels like both an indulgent but also a very sensible purchase. And then the other thing I think about with the NX is that it's um, more accessibly priced among the Lexus spectrum of vehicles. So this might be somebody's first entry into the luxury space. I think that can have a strong emotional um, effect for somebody who buys an Lexus NX. What do you guys think? Is there an emotion factor here? If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Lexus NX of your very own, let Kelly Blue Book, the trusted resource in vehicle pricing, be your pricing guide. There's a link in the description below where you can get pricing info on your current car or your future Lexus NX. Let us now vector to remarks. I'm going to take a quick second to thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. Today I'm wearing the white Ospreys. I like how they look, but no matter how fashionable I appear, I'm still quite functional. This has all the features that make Flying Eyes special. They're made out of a material called resilamide that's super bendy and you can do stuff like that, which means they fit super well underneath a headset or a helmet. They're so comfortable. Ah! Sweetie, you wear them in your daily life. How do you like them? Ah! <laughs> I wear the ophthalmic line of glasses, which come with these removable magnetic tinted lenses. They offer the same comfort and features as the aviation frames, but they also double as sunglasses. Would you appreciate aviation grade eyewear, whatever you do? If so, click the link in the description below. Use the promo code Micah to save 10% off flying eyes. Remark number one, infotainment. So there is a standard 9.8 inch screen, but we've got the optional 14 inch screen. It really dominates the interior. By the way, this is roughly the same interface we've experienced in a bunch of other newer Toyota and Lexus products recently. Thoughts? So the climate is integrated into the infotainment screen, which isn't really my favorite because I do prefer physical buttons generally, but the way it's laid out is logical, it's clear. If I'm looking at it, I find it e very easy to navigate around. I really appreciate that they do offer a knob for adjusting the climate temperature and that they do have a, a volume knob. <laughs> By the way, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both standard and wireless. Previously, they had this um, trackpad thing that you had to use, and um, that was generally not well regarded. So this is a full touch screen. That's all you use. You just touch the thing you want, and I think that's a big move up. Also, there is voice recognition functionality in here. Let's demonstrate. Hey, Lexus. What would you like to do? I'm hot. And whiny. Setting the driver's seat temperature to 67. Right on. But how are you going to address the whininess? <laughs> Lexus is working on an over-the-air update, I'm sure. My very favorite part of this whole system is the optional 360 degree camera system. Um, it has some functions that we found on the Lexus LX we drove recently. That's a big old SUV. And if you're curious what we thought, you can click up here. But uh, one of the really cool things, you have 360 degree visibility. You've got a bunch of different angles, but I love how it caches the image. So you have kind of a virtual translucent car effect. So you can see like, oh, that, that rock is over there now and I'm not gonna hit it with my rear tire cool one feature that jumped out to me is a digital key there's an option where you can um, set your vehicle up and send keys to people digitally using their phone to access the vehicle so if you share it with family members that is a thing you can do and then as I accelerate here I'm going to demonstrate something the 
The sound you heard is a lie, a lie. If you get the F Sport version of the NX, it has active sound control. And so there's a little bit of digital manipulation to enhance the sound in the vehicle. It, to me, it's not as overt as what we experienced in the Toyota Tundra, which was um, obviously fake. This is a much more subtle rendition of that active sound control. I don't think it would necessarily read as fake. All right, we should go through the engine choices. The base NX250 has a 2.5 liter engine. You can get it in front wheel drive or all wheel drive for an extra $1,600. Not particularly powerful, decent fuel economy. Then there's the NX350, which we have here. All wheel drive comes standard. It's a turbocharged engine, big bump in power, and a natural reduction in fuel economy. Then there's the NX350H, which is weirdly less expensive than the NX350. Meanwhile, you get much better fuel economy and 240 combined horsepower. Lastly, there's the NX450H+, Plus, which is pretty expensive, and it's a plug-in hybrid version of the NX. You get 304 combined horsepower and a 37 mile range, and also 84 mile per gallon equivalent, which is a complicated thing that incorporates uh, full electric range uh, plus gasoline uh, efficiency. It's a big number. Sweetie? Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Sure. I'm going to recommend the base $39,500 NX250. It comes really well equipped with eight-way power heated front seats, faux leather trim, smart key access, dual zone automatic climate control, and 10 speaker audio. As you make your way up the trim ladder, you can get more extravagant features like a kick activated power hatch, this panoramic moonroof, and automatic parking abilities. As for the competitive sets, you've got fancy small SUVs like the Acura RDX, the BMW X3, uh, perhaps the Volvo XC60, and if you're curious what we think about the XC60, click right up here. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Lexus NX, it is fancy, but it's also a little confusing. Uh, to me, it is the Paris Fashion Week of small luxury SUVs. What is that? Is that a t-shirt? Cool. Family, I think we've done a pretty good job reviewing the Lexus NX. May I have a five? And, well, give me one more. There we go. And a five. And you can get your high five. Ah! <laughs>